I am so glad I was born in the mid 1990s, not the mid 1590s, for example. If you weren't being taken out by some awful plague, it was severe punishment you had to worry about for things that you'd only get a slap on the wrist on for today. Today, we're shining the spotlight on the worst of the worst punishments throughout history, the ones that were reserved for the worst of the worst people. For the most part, anyway. I'm Eros James, and these are the top 10 disturbing punishments used on evil people in history. And we're starting things off with a bang. At number 10, we have Poena Kule, also known as the, uh, the sack torture. Uh, this was used in ancient Rome on those who had committed parricide, taking the lives of your you know, own parents, which is definitely evil but this punishment is pretty inhumane. The condemned person was first severely flogged, then they were sewn into a leather sack along with live animals, like uh, a snake, a rooster, a monkey, a dog. Sometimes the sack also contained uh, other animals or objects. Now, this would already suck. Just imagine being stuck in a sack with a bunch of rowdy animals, like kicking you in the crotch and biting you. But it gets worse. The sack was then securely fastened and thrown into a body of water like a river or the sea, causing the person and animals inside, mind you, to drown. A way to take drowning said to be one of the worst ways to go and make it 10 times worse. This punishment was not only physically brutal, but it was also symbolically significant. The mix of animals represented impurity. And the cherry on top uh, was that this was also a public spectacle. It acted as a deterrent, reminding other folks to think twice about about how they acted the next time a family dinner took a wrong turn. At our number nine spot, we have what I'm just gonna call stuck to a table. This punishment was used in medieval Europe on those who attempted to take someone's life with a blade. This one is pretty simple. The perp's hand would be laid down on a table and then the criminal's own blade would be shoved through their hand, uh, straight through so that their hand was now pinned to the table. Then they had to remove their hand from the table only they couldn't use their other hand to pull the knife out. So yeah, this would have been pretty excruciating. Depending on how far the knife was into the wood, you could be pinned down to that table for a while, just pressing your injured hand harder and harder into the guard until it finally released. Uh, this is probably the tamest thing on the list too. Number eight, getting impaled. Vlad the Impaler was a big supporter of this particular method. I have a hunch that's how he got that nickname. Now, I wouldn't say his enemies were evil, but to him they were, and uh, that's all that counts, right? Vlad was responsible for a lot of deaths too, and to be fair, I'm sure at least some of them had to have been garbage. I'd heard tales about Vlad the Impaler as a kid, and I always pictured being impaled as, uh, you know, having a stake through the heart. Your classic vampire trope that was inspired by this sadistic ruler's rather theatrical flair. But I later learned it was much worse than that more PG version in the movies. Vlad would impale his victims with huge spikes that would go from one end of the body all the way up inside and out the other. Usually the spike would poke right out of their mouth. Then he'd decorate the front of his castle with them as a, as a welcome to any invading forces. Uh, now that is what I call eccentric. Next up, we have the Blue Eagle. What would you do if a king threw your father into a pit of live snakes and watched as they smothered and, and bit him, watching him writhe in pain until he finally died? Well, if you were a Viking back in the day, you'd probably sack the whole village and inflict an even worse punishment on the man who took the life of your father. Well, in 867 AD, that man was Ayala, king of Northumbria, and his punishment was the Blood Eagle at the hands of Ivar the Boneless, son of Ragnar Lothbrok. So, here's what Ivar is said to have done to this despicable king. Ayala was, Ayala was restrained, lying face down on the ground. Then the image of an eagle with its wings spread out was carved into his back with an ax. Then each of his ribs were separated from the spine and splayed out. You can kind of start to see why this was called a blood eagle. Next, salt was rubbed into the wound, and to finish off the piece, his lungs were pulled out and splayed over the exposed ribs, fluttering in the wind like a bird's wings. At our number six spot, we have the molten gold punishment. This was used in a couple different parts of the world, Rome and South America. There are a few famous examples of this taking place, but it's a corrupt Spanish governor in early colonial Ecuador who died at the hands of this horrific punishment that I'll be referring to here. In 1599, the native Hivaro tribe were being unfairly taxed during the gold trade, and they decided to 
we see just how much this greedy governor really enjoyed his gold by pouring the molten hot metal right down the dude's throat. We've all had the experience of taking a sip of something hot before it's cooled down enough. That's just a minuscule taste of what this would be like. Even if it were just boiling water being poured down, that would probably be bad enough. But gold? This would obviously severely damage your organs, blister your lungs, it would harden inside your body. Just completely horrific. And number five, we have immurement. This practice was done in several parts of the world throughout history, but immurement in Christendom during the medieval times is probably the most well known. This punishment was rarely carried out, but was used as a form of religious penance or punishment with no means of escape. The victim is placed inside the confined area, which could be a tiny cell, a room, or even the wall itself, and then sealed off completely, building a wall of brick or a stone, basically building the person into the wall, cutting off all access to the outside world. Once immured, the person is left to slowly die inside this enclosed space. This would have been terrifying, similar to being buried alive, but more drawn out. At first, you'd experience a sense of isolation, then claustrophobia would set in. The lack of ventilation would then make it difficult to breathe. It would be completely quiet and pitch black. Dehydration and starvation would set in. The body would weaken. And finally, after days or even weeks of unimaginable agony, they would finally pass away. Number four, broken on the wheel. This punishment was used on thieves and murderers back in medieval Europe. I can understand where they were coming from with the, the latter, but thievery? That's a crime deserving of something this cruel. Anyway, so what is this punishment? It's pretty simple. First, the condemned person's limbs were tied to the spokes of a large wooden wagon wheel or a similar structure. This left the person exposed to the executioner's blows. The executioner then used a heavy iron hammer or other blunt instrument to shatter the bones of the victim. If they were feeling merciful, they'd start with the neck but depending on how bad the crime was, they might draw it out longer, starting with the ankles and wrists before moving on to the more vital joints. After the bones were broken, the executioner might weave the victim's limbs through the spokes of the wheel. The wheel with the broken body attached was then often displayed on a tall pole for a public view. Sometimes the victim would die of shock or immense pain rather than the actual injuries themselves. In some cases, it would take hours or even days for the person to succumb to their injuries. Next up, we have the death of Balthazar Gerard. Oh boy, I'll just start by saying this guy's death was drunk. That gives you a pretty good idea of how cruel and unusual this punishment was. Balthazar was a 16th century hired gun, known for his role in the unaliving of William the Silent, the leader of the Dutch Revolt against Spanish rule. In 1584, Gerard shot William the Silent at close range in Delft, Netherlands. So, uh, you know, hired gun, not a great guy, but did he deserve this? I wouldn't say so, but you know, different times, right? People thought this was brutal though, even for the time. First, he was whipped. His wounds were then smeared with honey and a goat was supposed to come out and lick it off. Uh, but the goat, even the goat was just like, nah, this is, this is messed up and I uh, just didn't want to go anywhere near him. <laughs> Following day, he had heavy weights attached to his toes and his shoes. Then he had shoes placed on him that were too small for his feet. They were oiled and then held to a fire. And as they heated up, they contracted, crushing his feet. Next, he had burning bacon fat poured on him. And this is all before he was actually finished off. It was just the buildup. Can't go into full details to what happened, uh, but finally, after multiple days, of this awful stuff going on. He was finally drawn and quartered. In its second place, we have rats. This was used on criminals back in the day as a form of cruel punishment. It was also used sometimes as a means of extracting information into the person's body. I don't think I need to do much explaining to get across just how awful this would be. Slow, agonizing, and disgusting. Quite the trifecta. And finally, we have keel hauling. Kill Hall, that filthy love. If you know what song I'm singing there, leave it in the comments. You'll get some props from me. All right, so this is uh, my worst nightmare. Other than being buried alive and everything else we've talked about on this list now, this was used by sailors back in the day to punish crew members who committed the most egregious of crimes or mutiny. As to whether these guys were evil, 
enough to, to deserve something like this? For the most part, probably not, but uh, here's how it would work. The sailor to be punished was tied securely with ropes, then heavy weights or sharp objects were attached to the sailor's body to make sure they'd sink in the water. Next, they'd be thrown overboard from one side of the ship, dragged underneath the ship's hull, and then pulled up on the other side. As the sailor was dragged under the ship, their body would be scraping and getting cut by the barnacles and sharp edges of the hull. So it wasn't just not being able to breathe that made it terrifying. Uh, this scraping could lacerate the skin, break bones. In many cases, the sailor would suffer long lasting injuries or even die from those injuries alone. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.